It's Dino Day. completely stock 2008 Vortec 4200 on the dyno. I'll give you a brief overview of the setup. It is a 100% stock 2008 Vortec 4200. It had 175,000 miles on it when it was pulled from the vehicle. We're also running the factory intake and the factory exhaust manifold with a cutoff section and a T4 flange welded to it. It is a 7875 turbo with a water to air intercooler, a LS throttle body, some other eBay parts for the wastegate and the blow off valve. For the ECU we are using a mega squirt gold box and using a micro squirt as a as a CAN bus connected data slave in order to monitor the compressor discharge temperature the manifold air temperature, the water in and out temperatures, oil pressure, fuel pressure. Basically we have all the sensors that you probably would want in order to really see what's going on with that water to air intercooler. This is our first time running a water to air intercooler, so we're going to find out if it makes some power. Power goals for the day are I would love to break 500 horsepower, my dad would like to break 550, if everything looks good, we may go for more, but we'll just have to see how the day goes. So let's get on to the dyno. Alright guys, for this first pull, I basically set up the tune to make a pull on wastegate and I set all of the VVT target numbers to what we found was optimal on the Fiat. So just as a reminder, the variable valve timing on this engine functions by retarding the exhaust cam. So more angle means more retarded exhaust and therefore more overlap. After this first pull, I was a little surprised to see how much boost the engine made. It made 19 pounds of boost. I was expecting a little bit lower, but we did have this wastegate sprung for the smaller turbo that was on the car previously, and that's probably why it made so much boost. Additionally, I was overjoyed to see greater than 500 horsepower. For the next pull, I decided to mess with the VVT. As you probably saw on the little graphic at the end of the pull, it didn't make a lot of back pressure. My theory is the cams will like more overlap like they do when the engine is running naturally aspirated. The reason I think this is the intake manifold pressure and the exhaust manifold pressure are about the same and therefore it is behaving like it would if it was running naturally aspirated. 
The only way to figure that out is to try it. So we did. So I couldn't really figure out why it lost a little bit of boost on this pull, but if you calculate the amount of power it should have lost by losing 3 psi of boost, and then s compare it to the power that it made, it actually gained close to 18 horsepower. So it liked that extra cam angle. If you recall in the Fiat video, it liked around 10 degrees of VVT, at 17 psi this particular combo seems to like 15 degrees but as you'll see later we didn't actually get to really find the ca optimal cam angle because we couldn't get the turbo to make a predictable 16 pounds of boost the next thing we tried was even more cam angle <laughs> On this pull, it made 19 pounds of boost again, and therefore we couldn't find the optimal cam angle at 16 psi. What is interesting is the boost to back pressure ratio still is around 1. Richard Holdner found on the dyno that the optimal cam angle for a naturally aspirated engine was 20 degrees. That was what we were targeting on this most recent pull. What is interesting is the engine doesn't seem to like it. It liked the first pull where we were targeting 10 degrees. Perhaps it would have liked a little bit less, maybe somewhere in between 10 and 20, but we didn't have time to perform that test. At this point, it was time to turn up the boost and make some power. <laughs> We were running a four port boost controller on this car. I started at 20% duty cycle on the boost controller for this most recent pull. Obviously it didn't make a ton of boost more than it had before. So we decided to jump to 30 for the next pull. More boost, more power. More boost, more problems. If you were paying attention on the last pull, you will have heard a little bit of ignition breakup. Therefore, for the next pull, we decided to gap the plugs down a bit and decrease the boost and try a little bit more timing. The hope was that the lower boost would not create ignition breakup if the spark plug gap didn't fix the problem. Well, it definitely didn't like that. It was clear at this point that we weren't going to get 600 horsepower on that boost level. If you noticed, there was still a little bit of breakup on that pull. 
I was a little lazy and we only gapped down five of those six plugs because the six plug was a little hard to get to. Therefore, we did the extra work and got that six plug gapped down, turned the boost back up, and prayed for no ignition breakup. It was a very good day today. I'm very happy with how the results came out. I must say, the water to air intercooler was very effective. The one annoying part was filling it with ice constantly. Pretty much every single pool we had to put nearly a full bag of ice into it. But, you know, that's part of it. We'll know in the future that we need more ice than what we brought. We were literally on our last bit of ice. Uh, by the end of the day, but for a 100% stock engine, I'm talking stock valve springs, stock cams, stock rods, stock pistons, didn't take it apart. The only reason I took the valve cover off was to paint it. I am amazed at how well this combo did. We were keeping an eye on the vitals all day everything looked fine and we just gradually creeped up on the boost we did run into a little bit of uh, spark breakup there at the end so we got the plugs down it still seemed to be breaking up just just a little bit so if we plan to run more boost in the future we probably need to gap that down even even more that being said the claim that these are identical to LS coils I don't buy anymore. Um, LS coils, we've had them on 020 gap. We've had them to like 900 horsepower, which would be like 650. And we've had no issues with breakup. And I know guys are pushing them much further than we have um, with no issues. So I think the claim that these are identical to LS coils, I don't know if I buy that anymore. We played with VVT a couple times during the day, and what was interesting was it doesn't seem to be drive pressure ratio related. The optimal cam angle seems to be related more to boost level than it is to the drive pressure ratio. Kind of how I figured was there would be a differential pressure between the exhaust and the intake and that would drive the optimal amount of overlap that you would want. What we found was it still seemed to like the same, uh, about the same numbers as what the Fiat did with a very restrictive turbo. We were seeing drive pressure ratios of around 1.6 on the Fiat and on this car, we were seeing 1.1, but it still seemed to like the same number. So I think there's a little more investigation there. It may be entirely back pressure related. So the amount of back pressure that's present dictates the amount of cam angle that you can put into it. We'll have to crunch the numbers on that and do some more analysis in the future. But we exceeded our goals. But as you may recall at the beginning of the video, our goal was to break 550 horsepower. Well, we did that in spectacular fashion. And this 
this gives me a lot of hope because kind of what inspired me to get into these engines was the Mighty Car Mods uh, Toyota Cresta that they built that has a Ford Barra engine in, in it. If you guys followed that build, you'll know that it made 600 rear wheel horsepower and the car just barely squeaked into the nines. Well, if you remember, on this car, we made 441 horsepower and we just barely squeaked into the nines. Now we're making the same horsepower that they were, 600 rear wheel horsepower. So, based on the numbers, I'd say we're right there for an eight second pass, which is extremely encouraging. That is the goal for the car. We would like to squeak into the eights with this car, but the only way to do that is to have enough power. Today, we got darn near the amount of power that we need to do that. The only way to figure out if that's true is to run it at the track, and you'll see that in a future episode. With that, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.